Hi guys. So yeah, it's been a wild couple of days over here. <laughs> uh, you can see by my hair that things have been really, really, um, what's the word, uh, hot over here. The the weather, it's, uh, it's quite unfortunate that clima climate change had to happen at our generation. Uh, even though, I mean, we can do things to try and, and help, but it's the big industries that really need to do all of the work, right? So, yeah, leaving that aside, as you guys know, we just released our newest Maya course. And uh, believe it or not, uh, this has been probably, again, one of the busiest weeks in the, this year so far. We released the course. Um, there were several clients that we were uh, presenting some of our work to, and they decided that they want to go forward with it. So, so now we have a lot of work on the table, and um, that's why I'm not going to start a project today, but we will start a project this Friday, okay? We're going to start a mini project, mini project series, uh, like the ones that we used to do. Uh, back in the like a couple of months ago. Uh, so any suggestions down here would be good I'm thinking about maybe a character like a bust or or like a weapon I, th I don't think we've done weapons before maybe a weapon Well, we've done one weapon we did the sword but like a more like traditional weapon probably something like that Let me know what you guys would like me to do and I'll be happy to do so But today I should have a very very cool announcement I want to show you a couple of nice little tools here. So if you've been a Maya user for a while now um, you might have heard about this. I've, I've mentioned this before, but I haven't mentioned them with Maya 2023 because they were not available until literally, I think, yesterday or the day before, which are the bonus tools. So for those of you that are unaware of what the bonus tools are, the bonus tools are this nice little plugin that uh, Autodesk releases every time they upload uh, or update their version. And it contains a lot of like little cool scripts and plugins that you can use uh, for your projects. It's available completely for free on the Autodesk App Store, as you can see right here. Just make sure, hello, my students make this mistake. Make sure you select the proper um, OS, depending on what you're working on. By default, I don't know why it's set to Mac uh, OS, even though I think most people work on Windows. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it has been updated. As you can see here, it got updated like literally two days ago on the 20th. So um, it's available now for 2023 and it has uh, some of my favorite tools. Now, one thing I didn't know about this one is that it actually has a documentation file. You won't find it on the web, but if you go here to the bonus tools and you go down here to the help options and you go to the bonus help tools, you're gonna have this super, super, super long um, FBX that teaches you how each of those tools work. And now it's not super like in depth, like some of them, you might need a little bit more work and uh, more like a, uh, like getting to know what the what the things do. Uh, but it's a really, really handy one. <laughs> oh my God, and with the heat comes the sneezes. So there we go. Uh, so there's, uh, I wanna share a couple of them because I do think they're quite, quite handy. And um, I, I was reading through some of them. And I think they're, again, really, really special. So you guys know about instances, right? Like let's say we have this object right here and then we wanna like modify this object, right? But we wanna have all of the same things that are happening to this object to be applied to this one. So one thing that we could do is we could do to duplicate a special over here, create, or uh, sorry, edit, duplicate special. Say we want a copy and we wanna like move this copy let's say uh, 200 units in the right, uh, there we go. Uh, and it's as set as instance, right? So when we do this, whatever I move on this component, it will go to the other side. Well, there's a really, really handy one, really handy option right here, where you can grab one object and go here to duplicate as mesh a reference. And it's pretty, pretty cool because it works in a very similar fashion as the as the instance and just as you can see right here like I, if i were to do any sort of change to the original mesh the new mesh will inherit those changes but here's the kicker the new mesh won't change the original one so if i move things over here or over here like nothing will happen to the other one so why is this uh important well because we can we can create like instances or this sort of like instance things and then once we find something that we like such as this one we just delete the history of this element and it erases whatever it had before we just assign the lambert back again and that uh, without having lost uh, the original things right here we can get this sort of copies right here and then we can do it again we can say hey edit duplicate as reference and then add or create other sort of variations um i don't have a concrete like example of oh this will be perfect for this specific situation but just keep in mind that having a copy that is connected to the original mesh and that you can uh, at any point continue working from without affecting the original mesh is really really cool because as you can see that one over there it still shares most of the same techniques while still retaining its own little things like the bevels that we did before so again pretty 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 cool that one though that's one of the 
the new bonus tools that I saw here. I I've been using bonus tools for a while now, but not all of them. Um, so yeah, I, I like that one. There's the duplicate on object. This one I haven't tried. Or actually, there's duplicate on, on, on component, I think. Which uh, I think one thing that you can do is you can select an object and then shift select like a vertices in an object and you can say edit a duplicate an object and then there we go you can select and go to select it and copy and orient and whatever and just replicate object and as you can see i just copied this sphere to all of the points in the element so how is this useful well this is actually i think i have an idea or a, a little thing that uh, might be useful which is let's say we want to do like a spike ball right let's bring this down to like 12 and then we create a spike for this thing right here like for a video game or whatever we just grab this guy right here uh and then uh well actually grab this guy and then grab all of the vertices duplicate object make sure that we orient everything and hit replicate object and as you can see boom we got this very cool spiky thing a couple of them are not perfectly oriented i'm not sure if i'd like move them or whatever but it <laughs> looks pretty cool so yeah uh this is another again another one of those bonus tools that's really really cool and i think you guys could uh benefit from knowing this little information so this is gonna be like a short little uh, video with just a qu quick couple of tips here and there this one's pretty cool. Uh, create locators, add components. Uh, this one I think I'm going to be using quite a bit for rigging. So uh, let's say that you want to do some like rigging, for instance, like on a cube, right? Like maybe you want to do like a cube and you want the pivot point of the cube to be up here. Well, what I can do is I can just grab that guy right there, create locators, add component. And there we go. We have a locator that lives exactly at that specific component. And one of the cool things is, especially when you're uh, dealing with like multiple components, if you grab multiple com components and you say, again, create locator, add components, it will find the middle point of that component. So you don't have to move your pivot point there. It will automatically find that point for you. And that locator is going to be uh, there just waiting to be uh, used as a uh, pivot point or a, a, a like a constraint point or whatever again super 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 useful there's also this one which was pretty pretty cool uh mesh locator so this is actually a locator that works as a mesh so if you don't like using uh like traditional locators because you can't see them because they're super thin uh using this uh, mesh locator is pretty cool because as you can see it actually has uh like elements right here and i believe here we have the thickness option there we go and we have the length option so there's a couple of like little attributes that you can use it's pretty much like all of these things are, are pretty much used in scripting so if you're good at scripting you could go in, in there and then like analyze how they're done but what's happening here is it creates a cube it extrudes the faces and it softens the edges and then um, it connects some of the attributes from this actions into this um, other new attributes on the element and that's what allows us to to become this very very cool thing so Again, super super cool. I really I really like this one. It's a it's a it's a fancy way to, to display this kind of stuff. Um, this one's super important. I, I actually used this one before for uh, 3D printing, which is poly surface area. So one question that a lot of people ask is how how can I calculate how much area? Like if this thing were, was flat, how much area does we have right here? You can go here to again display poly surface area, and uh, we are gonna have a display. Where is it? There we go. So we have 60. Um, units i believe centimeter square or something of area for this particular object and if we make it smaller it's going to be a four smaller and smaller depending on the amount of area that we have so super super useful uh, especially when you have like a like a character or something and, and you want to know like the amount of area that you have it, it, it's it's quite cool it, it, it's really really helpful and this is the sort of information that you could always get by using a script but having here on the bonus tools is just it's just pretty cool uh let's see what else what else oh yeah this one this one i really really like let me, let me show you this one where is it where is it they added this is a new one uh where you can use this little plugin to create your own tutorials i i i went in and saw a little bit of how tutorials are done like for the new maya 2022 they added this sort of thing where you can kind of like gamify the the learning experience i think it's a little bit too much work for something that can be explained relatively simple or simply uh but if you're into that then there we go but no there's a really cool one here where is it I mean, of course, it's uh, randomized transforms. I think we've talked about this one before. Randomized transforms is really, really cool because what you can do is you can have a lot of elements right here and then just grab all of them and go into modify randomized transforms basics, for instance, and say, hey, I want to move all of them minus 50 and, or 50 in like all directions and you just hit random move and then you're going to get random points everywhere. Super, super useful for when you're doing like still images. Like imagine you're doing like an asteroid belt or something. This is a really, really cool thing and you can rotate them around. You can scale them around as well. So 
super super cool to to use this uh, little thing i use it all the time for like leaves and uh and dust and stuff like that it's uh again really really useful the randomized transform and there's actually a randomized transform advance which has a couple more options this one right here so it allows you to calculate or, or change like a lot of different things this is the one that i actually used way way back when i was a student um but nowadays the, the basic one's a little bit more like straight to the point however if you want to have more control then yeah that one works really well but no where is it i, I wanna um, I, I just saw on the on the thing here that there's a very very cool this one store transforms attributes values there we go so have you ever had that thing where you're like i need this guy to be like here with this specific rotation with this specific skill like think about like a starship or i don't know like something like you need something to be here but you want to save these values. Like, for some reason, you need those values maybe to move it locally or something. You need those values, but you want to zero out the transformations because you were told that it needs to be kept clean. Well, you can go here to modify and say this store transforms values. And what's going to happen is you're going to get here a new button, okay? So I'm going to hit uh, values and say store uh, selected. There we go. And as you can see, now we have this value right here. So if I edit this, you're going to see that what we just did is we pretty much created a button that says the attributes for visibility, translation, rotation to whatever values we had right here. So if I were to zero this out, phrase this transformation, I need, and I, for some reason, like move this thing uh, away, like scale it or do something, I should be able to just click this button right here and uh, probably just zero out the transforms or the scales rather, and it should be back to, to the origin. Like, like just like zero all of this out and there we go so i just click here and then zero everything out and this is the original position so super super handy it, it, again it saves the position so if at any point you need to like move things around and then just go back to there without having to like write in the note but that's what i used to do or, or create a locator which is also a little bit um annoying super cool thing right there and then finally, I think the last one that I want to show, because uh, it, it plays really well with one of the newest tools here inside of Maya, which is the Sweep Mesh, is this thing called the Spiral Curve. So this is not something that you can easily create, and it's literally a spiral curve. Uh, I don't think we have a lot of options on the spiral curve. Oh, yeah, we do here. So we have these things right here, the rounds and stuff. But especially when doing, like, I could have used this one to do the, the little antenna for the robot on the on the newest course. Uh, but I, I, like, these things literally were not released yet, so I couldn't. Uh, but, yeah, like, with this one, it's super easy because, uh, for instance, let's say we want to do, like, a DNA thing, right? And we know that DNA has this sort of, like, double helix sort of thing. What I can do is I can just uh, duplicate this, scale it on the on the other axis like move it down so we get this sort of like double helix thingy and then when we sweep mesh as you can see right here let's increase the precision a little bit we can get this sort of thing right so uh that that's one of the unfortunate things about curves like you can create circles and you can create like normal curves but trying to do a spiral is really really difficult the other way that i know to do a spiral by the way is to go into uh, polygon primitives, create a helix. It's just, it's just so much time. It's, it's the same thing, but like more difficult. Grab the edge right here and then go into modify, convert. And then it's, um, there we, we have an option, which is uh, like edge to curve. There we go, poly, uh, polygon edge to curve. The problem with this curve, which is one thing I don't like, is sometimes the control vertices are not as perfect. So, and, and you would need to get like the perfect spiral first and it's just i don't think it's worth it so yeah with this bonus tool as you can see we just create a spiral and again this is also very useful to do like um like screws if you ever need to do a screw just go here create spiral curve scale this up for instance and we can use something like uh the form uh let's do like a lattice and then we grab all of these guys make it smaller and smaller and smaller smaller and then with the sweep mesh we got the the profile that we want let's go for like a four side profile thinner more precision and there you go so you just insert like a like a cylinder over here and that would be like one way to do a cool looking screw without that much of a problem right otherwise we would use like a traditional like tours or something and it, it, it wouldn't pro it, it probably wouldn't look as nice so so we can do something like this. If you want to be super, super precise, you could grasp like this edge, control D, just bring it down and go into it like a point, which is usually what happens with a, with this screw. 
But yeah, that's it, guys. Um, make sure you download the bonus tools. Again, it's free for every Maya user uh, directly from the Autodesk site. And a, a lot of cool-looking things. We got all our wrap tools. You need to take a look at those. Align UV shells, uh, clamps, UV precision. Like, all of these things. Like, that's... Uh, that, that, that's definitely something that I need to look onto because it might be some very useful things right here. And uh, if I see that they're cool, I'll let you guys know. So please let me know in the comments what kind of stuff you want to uh, do in the next couple of days with me here in the channel. Um, we are going to have our live stream next week, hopefully, if uh, if my job allows it, uh, allows me to do that. Um, and yeah, we'll just keep we'll just keep pushing. We'll give me more ideas, guys, and uh, make sure to check the course. By the way, we do have the Skillshare promo. Take a look at this. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're gonna be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So, what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There we go, guys. Thank you very much. I um, thank you for the support. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back very, very soon. I need to go to sleep now because I definitely need some rest. See you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.